What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and uh, who knows if you're actually watching this because everybody's going to be releasing a Pixel 6 Pro video, but I have my thoughts for you today. Uh, this is not a full review, first of all, I don't like to review a phone after only having six days with it, so full review will probably come next week. These are my thoughts answering all the questions I've read in the comments, as many as I could find about the new Pixel 6 Pro. So first of all, before we get started, I want to remind you guys again, Samsung has an accessory sale. If you guys want to check it out and support the channel, I'll drop the link below. Also, if you want to pre-order a Pixel 6 Pro, Best Buy still has some available. I'll drop that link below as well. Again, helps out the channel, so I appreciate that. Let's get started. So let's talk about everything that I haven't been able to talk about until this point, but now I finally can. Now, you guys have already seen the hardware, so let me talk a little bit about build quality really quick and comment on that. Some people have said that they think the phone looks cheap or feels cheap compared to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I entirely disagree with that. Uh, some people have asked if this top piece is plastic. I actually, I can't say for sure, but it doesn't feel like plastic. It feels like the rest of the phone. So anyway, in terms of the build quality and the feel, it, it feels great in hand. Like I said, I said in my very first video, this thing is quite light um, compared to something like the Galaxy S21 Ultra or of course the Galaxy Z Fold 3 that I've been carrying recently. This phone is incredibly, incredibly light and feels nice in hand, but still feels premium. It's still got a decent enough weight to it that it doesn't really bother you. Like the lightness isn't a problem. Let's talk about other stuff that I know people really care about. First of all, let's talk about performance. A lot of people a little concerned about the Tensor chip. You know, this is Google's first go at their own in-house chip. Is this thing going to be laggy? Things like that. So far, the answer to that is absolutely no. You can multitask on this thing. I've played games on it. For the most part, it's been fine. Um, like I said, I've played Asphalt 9 on this. Uh, I've played Balloon Tower Defense. You know, all the regular games that I play. I mean, I guess if you're probably a super hardcore gamer, the actual benchmarks show that this device is is not quite as good as something like the Snapdragon 888, you know, the, over, the, the new version that's slightly overclocked or whatever. Um, but it is still very sufficient in terms of multitasking everyday performance. There's absolutely no issues with the processor in this phone that I've noticed so far. Um, I did have one person, not myself personally, but another YouTuber that I know mentioned uh, some, uh, some slight overheating issues when streaming YouTube video on 5G outdoors, but that was in direct sunlight. So I don't know that I can say that that's really a problem. And it's not something I experienced personally. So, you know, in terms of that's one thing that a lot of people were worried about was, does this thing get really hot or something, you know, when you're doing a lot of heavy load on it? And I really haven't noticed that. Uh, let's talk about software, though, because I have had a couple of weird things with software. Um, I haven't had any huge, you know, big app force closes. But, of course, you guys know I use YouTube Studio to track my YouTube channel. And uh, this particular app seems to force close quite often on the Pixel 6 Pro. But I don't think that's a huge problem because, actually, on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which I have right here, I'm running the One UI 4.0 Beta 3 and YouTube Studio still closes on there, force closes pretty often on there as well. So I'm thinking that could just be an Android 12 issue potentially, maybe not a Pixel 6 Pro issue. It's still very weird that Google didn't fix something force closing uh, when they knew that this was going to be something that, you know, YouTubers were reviewing and taking a look at. And at the end of the day, that, that just seems kind of weird to me they didn't fix it. Um, the next thing is, uh, is typing on the keyboard, haptic feedback, because I know a lot of people are always interested in this. I think the, the haptic feedback on this phone is the best you're going to find uh, on Android. Obviously, the iPhone has a really great standard for haptic feedback. I think Google's always been just about as good uh, at the end of the day as, as iPhones. Uh, the Galaxy phones are not quite as good, in my opinion. So if you're thinking about something like the S21 Ultra, again, I think the Pixel 6 Pro has better haptic feedback. And haptics aren't something that matter to everybody, but they matter to me. And they do matter to enough people that I wanted to comment on that. I do think quite a few people do actually care about this. Uh, display. So the display, obviously, super smooth with 120 hertz refresh um, overall. Now, of course, some people ask this question, and I'll actually, I'll do the comparison for you really quick. I'll put them side by side so you can actually see. Let me turn these up to max brightness. So here's the S21 Ultra on max brightness. I'll just let you see for yourself. And here's the Pixel 6 Pro on max brightness. Uh, honestly... You know, I, I think, you know, to my my eye, they both look equally bright outdoors. I haven't had any issues seeing the Pixel 6 Pro when I'm using it out here in the Arizona sunlight. So 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's, if, if there is a difference, of course, Samsung does have the extra brightness for Bruce and sunlight where it gets a little bit brighter. And so of course that is an advantage, but in terms of peak brightness regularly, if you crank it up, they, they look pretty similar. I wouldn't say there's a huge difference. Uh, also in terms of overall color reproduction, things like that, uh, I think the Samsung, of course you can mess with the, there's also the color settings for the display as well. But on the default settings, I think the Samsung one maybe is a little more saturated uh, out of the box. So, you know, things look a little more popish, but they are pretty similar actually in their color profile. So you can kind of get an idea. Of course, in, over the video, it's not exact, but you can see the yellow on this Aftership logo. It's a little more saturated than the yellow on the Pixel 6 Pro. So I think in terms of display, you know, that's what you're looking at. In terms of a comparison, I'll go ahead and turn this back down so it's not absolutely killing the phone. Um, but that's what you're, in terms of comparison on display, S21 Ultra, I think, is the standard. Uh, I think this compares quite nicely. Colors are good, viewing angles are good, things like that. Uh, another thing that someone asked about that is actually a problem. Let's talk about that. So I've, I've mentioned positive stuff so far. The fingerprint sensor on this thing is not, not great. Uh, I think it uses similar ones that are in the OnePlus phones, and they've never been good. And if you actually look how long it takes for it to open, it's quite slow. If you actually take a look at my S21 Ultra, it's instantaneous. I mean, it's a night and day difference. It, it's impossible to compare exactly because, of course, i got two different hands here, and I'm not going to do it exactly at the same time. But you can see how slow it is, you know, comparatively by comparing this fingerprint sensor to the S21 Ultra. And another problem with this fingerprint sensor, uh, at least for me, I haven't found that it actually works with the display completely off. Um, I have always on display turned on, but if you actually have the display, that's actually why I turned always on display on. I don't always use it, but if you have the display turned completely off, uh, the fingerprint sensor doesn't appear to work. Whereas on the S21 Ultra, it does. So kind of an annoying thing. Uh, this is probably the thing that bothered me the most is the fingerprint scanner on this phone because it is quite slow and coming from an S21 Ultra or even the side mounted scanner on a Z Fold 3 is kind of a problem. Uh, let's talk about battery life. You guys probably noticed I made this video this morning. I'm making it the last minute because the, <laughs> the embargo lifts in an hour and seven minutes. Who knows if I'll even get this uploaded in time and no one will probably watch it anyway because like I said, the big channels are going to get the drop on me, but that's okay. You guys have probably noticed the battery life has stayed at 100 the whole time I've been shooting the video. Battery life has been absolutely phenomenal for me on this device. Um, let me see if I can go in. I took some screenshots of battery life just so you guys could see them. Uh, let me see if I can find the on-device stuff. And uh, I didn't really do a good job of organizing this, but let's see if I can find it really quick. I know people will be interested. Screenshots. And I guess they did not show up. I don't know why. Uh, I'll have to figure that out and I'll, I'll drop them below if people want to check them out. I don't want to waste too much time in the video. Anyway, battery life has been absolutely amazing. Uh, I've been getting about six to six and a half hours screen on time each day. Um, that's a mixture of 5G and Wi-Fi. Even though I've mostly been home on the weekend, I've turned on the 5G just to kind of mix it up for the battery life purposes. Um, and I think it's been really, really good. It's been on par with the S21 Ultra, maybe a little bit less, but not enough variance between the two to, for me to say that there's a huge advantage for the S21 Ultra. I think if you buy this phone, I've also turned the adaptive battery off because I like to make sure I get all my notifications in real time. So I'm running the adaptive refresh rate. I turned adaptive battery off so that it doesn't, you know, get, you know, my notifications late because I always have a problem getting Gmail notifications late when I have that on. All that stuff's been turned off. Always on display has been on. Still about six and a half hours. I mean, I use my phone pretty heavy, especially in the testing period, especially with the camera and stuff like that. So battery life, I think, is not a concern that anyone should be worried about. Now, I did make a little album here. I know I can find this one because I made it beforehand. I should have put those screenshots in here. This is a little Pixel 6 Pro album. This one's not taken by the Pro. I want to show you guys something on Magic Eraser there. But these photos were all taken with the Pixel 6 Pro. Beautiful photos. Uh, the still shots on this phone are just unbelievably nice. And one thing I want to comment on, you guys can see my boy here. His skin tone's a little, you know, darker than mine. And you can see how well the true tone really does. Uh, and it's highlighted kind of nicely. You can actually see here, there's a selfie I took of, of me, obviously. Uh, and then that photo also does a good job of capturing my true tone, you know, color, which is quite a bit, you know, lighter. This is a telephoto shot taken at 4X. Uh, you guys can see if I zoom in the absolute really nice detail. Uh, I think the telephoto on this thing is phenomenal. 
Uh, and then here's a couple of nice shots I took of non-people here. Nice bokeh here blowing out the background on a pumpkin that he colored. And then I took a obligatory macro shot with some flowers here. But just absolutely gorgeous detail um, with the Pixel 6 Pro. So I do think in terms of the color profile of the camera, of course, again, camera profile colors and things like that, given that software is being used to do so much of this, is going to be subjective for everybody. But I think the Pixel 6 Pro captures kind of more true-to-life shots than the S21 Ultra, in which case, I mean, it doesn't oversaturate things as much, especially when it comes to skin tone, which is something that Google, of course, was focusing on in their presentation. I wanted to show you guys something with the Magic Eraser because I want to comment on that too. I played around with that substantially during the trial period. Go down here to edit. Oops. No. No, no, no. no, no. So we got to go to edit and then choose Magic Eraser from the list. I usually do not shoot videos at 8 a.m. in the morning. You guys can probably tell. So it finds suggestions for you on the Magic Eraser. This is one from 4th of July years ago. And you can see... It doesn't always do the absolute best because if you look, this guy right here definitely should be removed as well. But if you do choose to erase all, it will do a pretty good job of getting rid of them. But you will see still some artifacts, especially if it's not a super well-defined background. Like you can see this guy's leg, part of it's still here. And then if you actually choose a person by brushing them like this guy here, because he really would be one of the ones you'd really want to get rid of. And then you choose to erase it. it. It does an okay job, but you really have to, you can zoom in and, and kind of erase better, but you really have to zoom in and play around with it. And even then, there are going to be some artifacts that are left at the end of the day. So you guys can kind of see how Magic Eraser works here. I mean, it will get rid of the photo bombers in your photos, but you will have to do a little bit more work than perhaps what Google originally was touting. Maybe that's no surprise to those of you who know, you know, about photo algorithms. And it's not a surprise to me, but it's not like it's just going to be, it finds all the perfect suggestions and does it perfectly the first time. So that's just something that I wanted to mention uh, at the end of the day. I'll save a copy of this, I guess. Um, and when you're done, of course, you can go ahead and save a copy and then with the, the pieces erased. So it's, it's, it's good. I mean, it's a cool feature. I think, of course, it's going to have a little bit more work to go. But the true tone, I think, is probably a bigger selling point, perhaps. But overall, the stills in the camera are phenomenal. I took a little video. The video is quite good as well, um, if I can find the video that I took. I thought the video was great. The only problem was the video on this particular phone was probably not quite as good as the iPhone. So um, at the end of the day, here it is. Here's the video I took. This video was very nice, but it wasn't quite as good as my iPhone 13 Pro. Um, the audio, though, very nice on it at the end of the day. My son playing at his water table. You know, nothing crazy. But I took quite a bit of, of different videos of him playing around. You know, the brightness, the color, you know, his catching the motion, all quite good on the video. Like I said, this is not a full review, just some initial impressions. Um, so I don't think you have to worry too much about video. I don't know that it's quite the iPhone 13 Pro level, but it's definitely quite good. Um, last thing, speaker quality on this. Someone asked about the speakers. Speakers, in my opinion, are really, really good. They are probably some of the best speakers on a candy bar style Android phone that I've seen. Uh, I compare them with, you know, pretty much any other uh, Android phone favorably. I think they do very well. So I'll play one of my videos so I don't get in trouble. Let's see. Uh, how about this one? Everyone should go watch this one if you haven't watched it yet. This is the, uh, S20, or this is the Galaxy Watch 4 and, oops, don't want to report my video. Uh, this is the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Apple Watch Series 7. There. But for 100 bucks less, uh, you can get the Wi-Fi only model. So the actual price difference between these two, if you buy the Wi-Fi only, is around 150 bucks. Now, Apple did have a $100 rebate on the Apple Watch uh, LTE versions. You could get a, like a $100. So I think the speaker is very loud. I've played podcasts on it, obviously listened to music on it, watched some videos. Very, very good stuff. And you guys can see the battery is still at 100%. Um, it's, it's actually that good, too. It doesn't really drop immediately and, and do really bad battery kind of keep you know tracking. It does actually have very good battery life. So uh, that's something everyone should be looking forward to if you're purchasing this phone. So at the end of the day, a couple of software bugs on Android 12, like I said. The fingerprint sensor is uh, pretty slow, unfortunately. 
Uh, those are really the only two big detractors that I have for this device in terms of things that have bothered me. I don't think the phone is cheaply made. I think the build quality is good. The camera is fantastic. Magic eraser, maybe not the biggest selling point. The true tone thing I think is legit. Speakers are impressive. Haptics are impressive. The display looks great. Um, the build feels great in hand. Um, you know, no huge issues in terms of the Tensor chip for me so far. Uh, we did get one software update during the trial period, but, you know, that, that kind of maybe speed up this fingerprint sensor a little bit. Um, and, and in terms of the, this camera bar at the top, they designed it pretty nicely, actually, because you can still type on the phone uh, without it wobbling. That's another thing I want to mention. I think some people mentioned this. Which is a big difference compared to something like the uh, the Galaxy S21 Ultra, where it does kind of wobble. So, anyway, those are the majority of the questions I think people ask. So, I'm going to post this. If you guys have other questions, of course, drop them below. I'll try to put them in the full review. Like I said, full review probably next week, because I want to have a little more time with it to kind of definitively say uh, if this is indeed the best Android phone of 2021. It's certainly in the running, in my opinion. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter if you want to follow the link below. I'll drop it down there. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.